I've been in LCJC three times. The first time I was 13, that was overnight, so I really didn't count it, and that's for runaway. All right, I'm ready now. Paradise is no stranger to the halls of LCJC. She's been here before. But this time, she'll be leaving for placement outside the home in a residential facility. You've never been to a placement? Ever? How old are you? 15. Oh, you're young. What's going on at home that you can't go home? Um, um, my dad and all that. Your dad, yeah, what? Probably, whatever. What about your mom? Is she around? Yeah, she's living with my uncle. Do you have contact with her? Every so often. Like so many of the kids who pass through LCJC, Paradise's problems begin with an unstable home life. I don't like my dad, like we never really got along. I really didn't have a father figure when I was growing up. A lot of the girls that are in here, they're here for running away. And they're always running away from something. It's never just like happy child running away from a happy home. There's always some sort of story behind there. And they do tell you their stories that are always very sad. Most of these kids have upbringings and family lives and home environments that few of us can imagine. Paradise isn't unusual in that sometimes these stressors become unbearable. I was living with my mom and she was working at the gas station. So it would be me and my three younger siblings at home when my mom works till 11 o'clock. I just never really got used to it and I just left. Like running away from my problems, basically. The majority of the cases here are sad cases, and we need something to help these young girls out because they're not getting it. But somewhere along the line, we just forgot, and we go straight from them, you know, being in an unhappy home to them being in jail. Like, there's no in-between for them. I have two older sisters, one older brother, two younger sisters, and one younger brother. The other times in LCJC, well, me and my sister, we, we stole from a store like last year. And then when I ran away, the second time I robbed a house too. So they kept me here for a month. And then I went home on my ankle bracelet. While on house arrest, the probation department monitored Paradise's progress, but it wasn't long before family problems escalated once again. It just got too wild, so I cut off my ankle bracelet and I left. And then two weeks later, I got caught and came back in here. And my last court date, I knew I was going to placement because I have a record of runaways. And I knew they weren't going to send me home. Placement would be like a foster care situation. It's like group homes, uh, residential treatment. Sometimes kids have to be removed from the family setting because they just cannot function in the home. And so we separate them out so that we can you really concentrate on what the issues are. Did they tell you how long they think you're going to be there? Three months, if I'm good, but if I'm bad, I could be there until six months to a year. How, when are you going to be 16? March 30th. Oh, right around the corner. I can't wait. <laughs> the public does not see it, but you have like this picket, you know, white fence in your head, and what these kids are going through in their home life is not always positive. So to expect for them to listen to me when I tell them, look, you gotta stay in school, make sure you listen to your mom, you know, all that is words. I think a lot of times the kids want to do good, but depending on how their home life is set up, it's very difficult for even the strongest child to rise above and, and go to a positive path. So are you okay with going to placement better than being here? Mm-hmm. I'd rather be there than here. I'm actually lucky I'm in here because, I mean, I'm not lucky because this ain't the place you want to be, but I'm thankful because when I was out there, I was drinking and I was smoking and having sex. When I'm in here, I'm not drinking, smoking, or having sex, so it kind of puts a lot of stress off of you instead of putting stress on you. Some of the times, you know, it's best to go in a place like this or get help. It's better to get help than Stay in some place that you're not wanted. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Yep, you too.
I do have the two younger brothers and the one older brother. I've really been taking care of my two younger brothers since I was 13, because my mom's always been at work. So I, I basically raised them too. Is he upset right now because you were arrested? Was he with you guys? Yeah. Oh, so he had to see the whole thing? Ariana had no bad intentions for wanting to catch a high school football game. But having been expelled from the school a year before for fighting, the principal didn't see things the same way, and he summoned the police to escort her off of school premises. I was going to a football game. It was supposed to be me and my mom and my two brothers. My mom had to leave to take her boyfriend home, and she was going to come right back. So when we go to buy our tickets, and the principal comes up, and she says, because I don't go to that school, I couldn't go. So I had to leave, and she had the police come to my face and rush me down. According to the police report, Ariana resisted arrest and was verbally abusive towards the officers. She states that she was facing a dilemma. She'd been asked to leave, but her brothers were already in the game, so what was she to do? Leave them totally unsupervised, or defy the officers and go in after them? As luck would have it, her mother showed up at the last minute, so she didn't have to make that choice. But Ariana was still in trouble. You seem, like, very angry. Are you mad right now? Why? Do you think you have anger problems? No. Do you need the court to help you? You don't need the court's help? No. Uh, do you understand you're on probation? So this kind of looks bad on you. Ariana's case is complicated by two previous charges, for battery on a classmate and driving without a license. Her last court case ended with a warning. The um, probation officer told me if I got in any more trouble, I was going to have to go to girls' school. So yeah, I'm real nervous. Preoccupied with thoughts of being sent to juvenile prison, Ariana prepares for another weekend of detention in her court hearing on Monday, which could mean a long time away from home. I'm trying not to think about it. It's making me real nervous. I just don't know what's going to happen. Usually I got an idea. This time I don't. That at-risk kids are often faced with growing up faster than most of us is anything but a cliché. Kids are often faced with playing the role of an absent parent, taking care of their siblings, and even contributing to a family's monthly financial needs. For Ariana, this makes being detained all the more stressful. I can't take it in here. Three days being locked up, not doing anything. That's not good. After a while, you start to get a little uh, crazy. <laughs> Some of them seem to be so happy. It's like, how are you happy and you're in here? How do they do that? Nearly 30% of all the juveniles arrested each year are females. Detention officers have told us that females differ from boys in that they're much more social in their interactions. Saturday night means chapel service for any of the youth offenders who choose to attend. How are you guys going to do that? You going to do it on your own? Did you try to do it on your own before? Did it work? It would be difficult for most teens to imagine the stress that comes with being detained, away from friends and away from family. It's especially hard on Ariana, which we see when she has a visit from her mom. Mama, you can't go to girls' school. Because it's like, you're the center of the household. You can't go to girls' school. What's everybody going to do? Going to girls' school means being sent to juvenile prison, a difficult thing to consider on its own. And yet Ariana still has the welfare of her family to consider. And on top of that, I have to pay your fees while I'm here tomorrow. So that's $110 plus the money I lost Saturday, which was overtime. Because Ariana's mother works evenings and nights at the local factory, the responsibility of raising her brothers often falls on Ariana. You had to get it together because 
I'm saying like, I feel like I'm having panic attacks. You're not home. I can't talk to you. I didn't go to work Friday. I couldn't get it together. Stay home. Mess with your brothers. Or I try to get them to stop crying. It's ridiculous. Sometimes you just gotta just hold up, be quiet, don't say nothing. Control your temper, your emotions. Stupid. I wasn't even given a chance to walk away. As soon as they seen me, they had the police all in my face. That was crazy. And then they did it in front of everybody. No. I'm gonna giddy up. I gotta try to get to the stores before they're closed when they grow trees and you didn't make a full list for me. So I guess I'll see you in the morning and then uh, we'll be going home afterwards. I hope so. It's just I don't want to deny the charges and then have to sit in here and wait for another court date like everybody else. You got to sit in here and sit in here and wait and then you go on trial and then it's like I said, the police officer against you who's been here twice. I mean, who are you going to believe? So you just say that you're guilty just to go home? It's crazy. No, you can't go to girls' school. Because you'll be home tomorrow washing dishes, cleaning up. Hopefully. They know hopefully you're going home. OK, I better go. See you in the morning. All right. I just hope I get to go home. If anything worse comes, um, house arrest, I guess. Girl school is, from what I've heard, like it's just the worst thing. I want to tell the judge the whole story and just let her know that I, I am going to school. I have changed a lot since the last time I have been to court. Tell me what happened. Me, my brother, and a friend, we was going in line to get our tickets for the football game. And the principal had uh, stopped me, and she said, well, um, I don't go to the school no more, so either I had to leave or I had to go to the other side. And when she came up, she came up with the police officer. I said, um, okay, well, I gotta get my brothers first. He said, no, I asked you to leave. The man put the um, handcuffs on me, and then he took me to the police car, and that's when my mom pulled up, and he had told her I was uh, cussing at him and all this. Were you? No, I wasn't. No more questions, Judge. Ariana, are you on probation? Yes, I am. What are you on probation for? For um, battery and driving without a license. Well, what did that battery involve? Uh, me and my friends and um, fighting a female. OK, you and your friends, how many friends? Uh, I think it was five of us. There was five of you fighting with another person, right? Yes. With one lone person? Yes. And you beat up this victim, right? Uh-huh. And then you go to the football game, and you end up getting arrested, and you say you didn't do anything, though, right? Right. And you weren't saying anything? No, I wasn't saying anything to him. You weren't screaming profanities at him? No, I wasn't. Well, how was it you became arrested then? I don't know. I have no further questions, Judge. All right. Thank you. You may have a seat back there. The purpose of today's hearing is to determine what should happen to Ariana. Do you have an opinion as to what the court should do? I want my daughter home with me. How is she doing in school? She's doing real good this year. I took her to a different school. I didn't want her with the same people. Do you believe that the environment at her former school was part of the reason why she was having um, her anger problems? Yes. So you recognized the problem and did something about it? Yes. Okay. Are you able to provide supervision um, over her? Yes. Um, when do you work? I work swing shifts rotating backwards. And explain that in a little bit more detail. Um, 
I finished midnights today and I start afternoons um, Wednesday. When I finish, I may or may not have a day off and then I go to day turns and then back to midnights, rotating backwards. That's all that I have, Judge. Thank you. You may have a seat. As a final point of perspective, Judge Mary Beth Bonaventura will call the probation department to testify and give their recommendation of what should happen with Ariana. Now Judge Bonaventura will turn to Ariana's probation officer to get her perspective about the case. Because the probation officer has the most frequent day-to-day -day contact with a youth offender, their input is critical. Speak with uh, Campania Charter School this morning to get an update on how um, this young lady was doing. Um, I spoke to two of her teachers, a science teacher and an English teacher. They report that she's very well behaved, she's getting excellent grades. So we do want her to continue her um, education. We feel that that's very important. We also have a concern about some possible depression. Um, so we would like to have a mental health screening and to follow through with any recommendations. We would like to see her uh, released to her mother's care on in-house arrest so that she can continue attending school I have uh, spoken to mother this morning and explained to her um, what our concerns were and what the recommendation would be. All right. Um, Mrs. Guzik, do you have anything about release or detention? Judge, until I'd heard the mother speak, I was of a mind that Ariana could go home. I I'm concerned. She's at the football game. Her mother leaves for a brief time, and this is when this problem arises. Uh, and then her mother testifies that she works a swing shift and Ariana's basically not being supervised in the home. You know, she's on probation for the, the battery that was described. She was arguing with the police officer whether she says she was or not. Uh, there's some type of impulse control problem here that Ariana has that leaves me very concerned. I think there is an element to her that does endanger herself and does endanger others and that needs to be addressed by this court. Judge, the mistake she made was to wait and find her 10 and 11 year old brother. And apparently their feet weren't moving fast enough for the police officer at that point. That's why she's in here. Judge, I would agree with the probation department's recommendation that the assistance for the depression um, be ordered, but I disagree with the probation department's recommendation that she be on house arrest for a fight at school and for not leaving a football game fast enough. I think that that is, um, um, Overkill. Thank you. The decision the court has to make today is twofold. One is if there is there probable cause that this child has committed a delinquent act, and I think that that's uncontroverted. And for that, police officer in the report says, you know, that she was very vulgar to him, and you know, used a lot of profanity. You know, for her to say that she said nothing is hard to believe. You know, minimally, I'm, my my voice is going to be elevated, saying I've got to get my sibling at least. And so I, I think that somewhere in the middle, you know, if you live long enough, you kind of know that somewhere in the middle is the truth. The second decision I have to make is whether or not she should remain detained here or be released to the custody of her mother. Nothing I heard here today makes me believe that she's a danger to other people or to herself. And so the court is going to order that she be released to the custody of her mother. But I am going to place her on in-house arrest for this reason. I think that until this case is over and until her probation is over, I mean, she needs to have some restrictions. There are consequences to your actions. Uh, but I'll order that um, she have a mental health screening within 30 days and that uh, you follow those recommendations to address uh, whether or not she has depression and if so, what um, help is out there for her. All right, then this hearing's adjourned. Thank you. OK, Ariana, you're going home. She's yeah. not somebody, I think, that's a real threat to the community but more that has some anger issues that, you know, hopefully we can help her. I mean, that's what we're designed to do. We have children and they are just doing things for the first time in their life. They're going through experiences that we as adults have experienced maybe too many times, but the adult system isn't equipped, nor does the law allow them to provide for all of these services from counseling to drug testing, to vocational training, to all sorts of services that would help rehabilitate somebody. To have somebody actually fight for me to get out, that, it feels pretty good. Released? I think everybody has depression issues at some point in their lives. I mean, I know I'm not crazy, but I do think I need to be in therapy, yeah.
think I do, but um, I guess that could be a good thing.